Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in my riding of Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry, there are many great volunteers whose hard work and dedication makes life so much better for so many. Pierre Roy is a great example of someone who has co contributed countless hours to the community and just recently received the Governor General's Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers. In returning to the community, Pierre took no time to start a, his long list of community initiatives. In 1993, he founded the Lancaster Antique Car Club, where he raised funds for park and community centres upgrades. And as a member of the Royal Canadian Legion in Lancaster, he worked with all levels of government to initiate a number of projects, including the relocation and upgrading of the Lancaster Cenotaph, the upgrade and extension of the Lancaster Legion building itself, and currently is in the final stages of the establishment of an Afghan war memorial that required the purchasing of land and securing a retired Lab 3 from the Canadian military. Despite the many long hours involved in these projects, Pierre also found time to volunteer with the St. Lawrence Agriculture Society, which hosts the Williamstown Fair, the Canada's oldest fair, and served as, as its president in 19, or 2015 and 2016. Pierre was awarded the 2008 South Glengarry Citizen of the Year, and in 2014, the Royal Canadian Legion Life Membership Award. His people like Pierre and his wife and able assistant, Linda, who make such a difference in our community. Pierre and Linda, congratulations and thanks from the residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Hungary. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon. I want to tell you about a good buddy of mine who passed away recently. His name is Athel Stewart. He was a retired educator. At one time, we lived across the street from each other. Just after Gail and I moved in, there was a knock at the door. I go, there's this big guy standing there. He says, welcome to the neighborhood. My name is Athel Stewart. I drink rye and lime ricky. I say, well, come on in. I know I have some rye. I'm not sure about the lime ricky. He says, well, don't worry about it this time. I'll drink whatever you have. <laughs> well, that began a friendship that lasted more than 35 years. Athel had a brother, Dr. Ed Stewart. He was Bill Davis's deputy minister, and he uh, served as secretary of cabinet from 76 to 85. They would sometimes plan a political visit to Windsor, coincidentally, when the Jays were playing the Tigers. <laughs> I got to go to one of those games with them at Tiger Stadium, and some kid named John Torrey came with us as well. <laughs> Athel's wife, Maureen, is a McCoy. So we had the Hatfields and the McCoys living across the street from each other. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Gail, doesn't drink. So I put it in my will, I'm leaving my bar and all of its contents to Athel. When we moved around the corner, I gave him my bar, I kept the contents. Athel really liked a good single malt scotch, especially mine. He loved to golf, he cheered for the Glasgow Rangers, he always voted conservative until I ran for the NDP. Oh. Oh. Speaker, I love the guy, I miss him dearly, I have his photo up in my office and on my bar at home, my heart goes out to Maureen, Jim, Chrissy, Brad, Sarah, Kate, and Christopher, and Helen, and all the McCoys. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker, and it gives me great pleasure to rise today in the House to highlight the recent designation of Geary Avenue in my riding of Davenport as, and I'm going to quote, the coolest restaurant strip you've never heard of by the Toronto Star columnist Amy Pataki. Nice. The Geary Avenue strip is where old world meets new world, with a variety of local restaurants guaranteed to make foodies want to flock far and wide to the great riding of Davenport. Located north of DuPont Street, between Ossington Avenue and Dufferin Street, Geary Avenue offers a range of delectable eats bound to satisfy any food craving. From Porto Nova to Meta dos Leitões, or north of Brooklyn, from artisanal pasta a Familia Baldassare to craft beer at Blood Brothers Brewery, or Nova Eta Bakery for some delicious pastéis de nata, or Portuguese custard tarts, just to name a few. 
I am so proud to represent a riding as diverse as Davenport. Our community's strength is the variety of rich and richness of our multiculturalism, which can be seen at every street corner in the clothing, music and foods that has given Davenport its increasing notoriety. Geary Avenue is the perfect example of what happens when you have an open and inclusive environment that celebrates the best of what the world has to offer in one walkable strip, now deemed the hippest street in Toronto. I encourage everyone to visit Geary Avenue to enjoy for themselves the best that Davenport has to offer. Good. Thank you. Further member statements. Member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. April is Be a Donor Month in Ontario. I want to recognize the communities in my riding, which are always high on the list of organ donation registration rates, and one individual who has tirelessly advocated for organ donation in her community. Again this year, Perry Sound has the highest percentage of registered organ donors in Ontario at 55%. And close by, 52% of Bracebridge reg, uh, residents are registered organ donors, 49% in Huntsville, 47% in Graveners. The average across Ontario is 32%. That is getting better. It's up from 27% in 2015. The high numbers in my riding are in part due to the efforts of Sandra Holdsworth. Sandra received a liver transplant in 1997 and has spent some 21 years since promoting organ donation. Sandra founded the Muskoka and Simcoe County Gift of Life Associations and has served on the provincial and national organizations. In recognition of her work, Sandra is one of nine people who have received the Trillium Gift of Life Champion Award, and I agree she is a champion. I saw Sandra on Friday at the Bracebridge Vigil for Humboldt. 21-year-old Logan Boulay, one of the victims of the Humboldt Broncos tragedy, was an organ donor. Six people received his organs, and as a result of the media coverage, more Canadians have registered to be organ donors. But it shouldn't take a tragedy like that to inspire people to register. Mr. Speaker, I encourage all Ontarians to help end the wait. Register at beadonor.ca. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Further member statements. The member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. It was a sad day in 2012, just before Thanksgiving, when this Liberal government killed the only passenger train in northeastern Ontario, the Northlander. It was a credibly sad day. They tried to they tried to divest or give away the whole ONTC, Northerners United, and stopped them, but they still slipped that train by. But an election is coming up, and. This government is going to be gone, and we have committed to put $25 million a year into a northern rail transportation strategy to bring back, to bring back passenger rail service to northeastern Ontario. And one thing where we are—I'm being heckled here by the Conservatives, but the one— <laughs> The member from Algoma, Manitoulin, and myself are very proud. We're going to be driving to Sault Ste. Marie tonight because they're going to be having a conference on passenger rail tomorrow, and we're going to be so happy and so proud to be able to announce and talk to them about how to reconnect the north, the northeast, the mid-north, and the northwest, to reconnect them to the rest of the province. I commit that there is, Speaker, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and then for Northern Ontario, for passenger rail, it's a train. Thank oh, you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On the evening of April 25th, Hillcrest High School in my riding will be hosting their 24th annual cancer drive. Students canvass surrounding neighbourhoods to raise funds to support the Cancer Society. I do have to declare a bias. Both my sons, John and James, are alumni of Hillcrest High School. And over the past 24 years, the school community has raised over $500,000. So your donation, donations are providing hope to thousands of people affected by cancer, and the generosity will fund innovative research, provide vital support services to cancer patients, and help change lives. So people can go online uh, today, Mr. Speaker, to help Hillcrest High School to reach this year's fundraising goal of $20,000. And I'd like to thank my friend Lynn Peterman, the parent of a, a Hillcrest High School student who initiated the drive in 1995. I'd also like to thank the students, 
teachers, and larger Hillcrest community for continuing this amazing tradition. Your passion and dedication are needed to support those in need, and best of luck with the cancer drive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member for Whitby Oshawa. Speaker, Whitby Fire and Emergency Services is mourning the loss of one of its own with the death of Chief Fire Prevention Officer Nick Webb. Nick Webb died on April 10th at age 57 following a battle with cancer. Oh he joined the Whitby Fire Department in 2013 as the Chief Fire Prevention Officer, arriving from the Markham Fire and Emergency Services where he served for nearly 20 years. Speaker Nick served for more than four decades with the Canadian Forces as part of the Royal Regiment of Canada and as a Regimental Sergeant Major of the Toronto Scottish Regiment, continually moving up the ranks due to his enduring commitment to his work and his country. Nick was a highly celebrated and decorated service member. Whitby Fire Chief Dave Speed had this to say about Nick. Nick will forever be remembered as a fire safety leader who was dedicated to protecting the Whitby community. He was passionate about making a difference and has forever left his mark on our department. Speaker, my sincere condolences to Nick's wife, Sherilyn, his daughters, Madeline and Megan, and the members of the Whitby Fire and Emergency Services Department. Thank you, Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to rise today to shed light on the 2018 spring cleanup of the Highway of Heroes. For three weeks, Kerry Todo, retired Master Corporal Colin Fitzgerald, and Corporal Nick Kerr have been getting up at 4 a.m. and cleaning all of the on and off ramps along both sides of the 172 kilometer stretch of the Highway of Heroes. I'm very proud of this Kingston trio, each of which have remarkable stories and have made a big difference, both at home and abroad. Fitzgerald was one of the very first recipients of the Medal of Military Valor for his courageous actions on May 4, 2006, when he entered a burning military vehicle and successfully drove the vehicle off the roadway, allowing others in the convoy to escape. Carrie Todo is a psychiatric nurse who proudly served in Afghanistan, and Nick Kerr currently serves as a soldier. The trio is called Service, and they are scheduled to clean with the CFB Trenton troops and their base commander on April 20th at the Trenton on-ramp at the Highway of Heroes sign. The cleanup starts at April 15th and goes until May of 2018. In their pursuit to adopt the entire 172 kilometres of the Highway of Heroes, I think that Todo said it beautifully, in remembering our fallen, part of our initiative with Service we never want our fallen names to dilute with the passage of time. This 2018 spring cleanup of the Highway of Heroes is not just about keeping the highway clean, it's remembering those who have fallen and showing appreciation for those who continually serve our country. I would encourage anyone who can connect with the trio to pull up their sleeves in the coming weeks and get involved. Thank you for your service. Merci. Thank you. Members, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. This week marks National Volunteer Week across Canada. It's an opportunity to celebrate how irreplaceable volunteers are making our community special. I had the opportunity to celebrate local volunteers last night when I attended the Caledon Community Recreation, or Recognition Night hosted by Mayor Thompson and the Town of Caledon Council. It was an opportunity to thank committed volunteers who give back across Caledon for organizations like Bethel Hospice, Caledon Meals on Wheels, 4-H clubs, and numerous sports clubs. Across Ontario, service clubs like the Lions, Optimus, Kinsmen, Shriners, and Rotary Clubs, Legions, our sports teams, community bands, churches, hospitals, and schools would not be able to function without people volunteering their time to causes they are committed to. Volunteering is one of the most selfless things you can do because you're offering up your time. And there is nothing more limited or valuable than a person's time. Volunteers never expect anything in return for their commitment, just an understanding that the act of volunteering is making our community stronger. So to the volunteer delivering Meals on Wheels, to the volunteer reader in our school, to the service club members raising funds for our parks, and the hospice and hospital volunteers tending to our gardens and our loved ones, thank you. 
You don't do it for the recognition, but you deserve our thanks. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.